Entropy is a company started when me and my two co-founders met and decided that we wanted to tackle a big problem. Uh, and one of the, you know, I think it was just a, a happenstance that we picked the world's probably second oldest problem in society, which is counterfeiting. You know, counterfeiting has ex existed since civilization has existed. People have made fake coins. Uh, anything that was made was faked, uh, whatever there was an opportunity, and that trend continues today. Mm -hmm. Why do you think counterfeiting is such a big problem? Uh, <laughs> it has a lot to do, I think, with uh, beginning with consumer demand, right? Uh, that's how it always was uh, portrayed, where the ability for someone to buy a coveted product, coveted not just in terms of brand or luxury products or stuff like that, even in terms of need mm -hmm. and necessity. A good example of that were N95 masks when COVID came out. Right, they were just the whole internet was rife with N95 mark ads. All of us have seen it. Most of them were counterfeit. So anyway, there's supply and demand and opportunity. Yes, I think that's the perfect way to put it. It's a combination of uh, the curve of supply and demand, which meets a great distribution network and the opportunity of timing. And you bring up distribution network, right? Those products arrive at your front door because of the ability for you to reach across the world. Right and order and buy things. And, and in some cases, you just don't know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a confluence of many different factors. So distribution, it hasn't uh, necessarily changed, but it has just scaled due to the availability, accessibility. And of course, the, the scale of this distribution and accessibility has also prevented countermeasures like what the customer, what CBP would do, right? Because they don't have the time or the bandwidth to check every single product. My guess is they wouldn't check more than four to five percent of everything that comes through the borders uh, within just this country alone. And when that is the situation and the scale of counterfeiting has just gotten bigger and bigger, the, those organized gray networks have also just gotten better and better at knowing how to evade uh, uh, detection mechanisms. How difficult is it today to distinguish a really good counterfeit product from the legitimate, authentic product? Um, <laughs> as an expert in this space, I'd, I'd, I'd revert back to it depends. But if I had to break it down, I'd say it, it, two things matter there. One is what knowledge do you possess to be able to consistently detect? And what do you know about the latest and quote unquote greatest counterfeits. Um, and on the other hand, how detailed can you be and how accurate can you be using that knowledge, right? So it's, uh, it's really hard. In really short sentences, it's really hard to do that without the knowledge expertise and definitely almost impossible without good technology that supports you. And you've built some technology for this very purpose. What does it do? Yeah, so we built an AI system um, way back in 2014, 2015, because we saw that AI was, you know, going back to what we were talking about, this, uh, this thing that's dynamic, that's always learning, and always getting better at detecting these kind of fits, because that's just how you learn, right? We all, it's, it's, it's almost like what a human would do. Um, so we built a whole massive data set of authentic products and counterfeit products. Mm -hmm. We taught computers how to detect those minute differences, you know, every, uh, roughly about between two and 4,000 different characteristics on every single image that's taken, right? So we built that system, trained it, and then put that to test and said, hey, go out, go out in the market and detect all these counterfeits. Whenever someone sends images to us, these AI algorithms are making that judgment, yes or no, yes or no, on every single part of the item. And then it's, uh, it provides a certificate and a result saying, hey, yes, we believe this is authentic based on all the information we have. And, and so just to clarify, so the, the AI allows your system to learn from all the images it collects authentic and inauthentic. And the more it collects of that information, the better it will become, I imagine? Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, this is one of the use cases where the data is uh, sort of siloed. And you shouldn't actually be exposing that data out because then you're basically telling the counterfeiters how they can do better, right? right? Uh, but that is precisely how it works, where 
it's the community providing us with data to protect themselves and everyone else in the community. Give me a sense of uh, sort of the variety of products that are in your library of images that help you detect what kind of products are fake or real. Sure. So right now we specialize in two large categories, which is luxury handbags and accessories and, uh, and uh, sneakers. You know, your Nikes, Jordans, Adidas, New Balance, all of those. And we're constantly working towards expanding those categories because our customers keep asking for it. Hey, when are you going to do this? You know, apparel. Or, so our goal as a company is to expand as much as we can. But a lot of that depends on how quickly we get access to data, um, which are, where are the fakes available. You know, roughly about 15% of our entire data set is only full of fakes. And if you don't have that, then you're not going to be able to know what's, what the difference is. So getting fakes is always harder in a weird, ironic sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we're not like a regular consumer where we buy, you know, 20 of the same type, right? We need different quality grades, and we need to be able to go find them, seek them out, and it's not that easy. Um, so literally, your job is to go out and buy fakes to prevent people from getting duped by fakes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. And we do some some uh, what I thought were fun tests because we're like, hey, we have all these fakes. You know, we're not going to sell, and we're not going to do anything with them. We're not, neither are we going to burn them because that's not environmentally friendly. Right. So we started doing tests where we were trying to understand what they're made of. And that is actually a big, that was a big revelation to us. It was, it, it scared me personally because I didn't realize that 100% of all the fake handbags that we sampled, they all had lead and cad cadmium paint on them on the surface. So if you're buying a fake product, that $300 amazing fake that got you a deal that looks exactly like the original one, that stuff has lead paint that is rubbing off on your skin every time you use it. Do you think consumers understand this? No, they don't know this. That's the problem. Everybody thinks that this is a victimless crime. Ah, what's the big deal? But when you get down to seeing how these are made, who makes them, 10-year-old, 12-year-old kids who are chained and have to do manual labor in order to pay, the, pay off the parents' debts. Those are the kind of people who are employed in this industry. And this is what they use it to, to make it look as good as a real thing. It's not a victimless crime. It is extremely dangerous. Is it too easy for people to yes. buy items online right now that Absolutely. are fake? Absolutely. Whether they know it or not, it is way too easy. Do the platforms need to do more to, to fend this off? Always. Always, they, they will have to, uh, and in my view, anything to do with this ability to know if something is real or not, if it's coming from the manufacturer. And in many cases, you know, in, in, the, in the world that we deal with, it's, we're talking about products that were made 30, 40 years ago. There, there was no technology then that enabled it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, who do you think is responsible or should be responsible for trying to protect consumers from these counterfeit products? Sadly, everybody involved in that transaction, <clears throat> from the marketplace to the manufacturer to the government to people like us, uh, we are in some ways sort of the enabler, the glue that connects them together. Uh, but responsibility lies with all of them. And it, comes, it needs to come from a place that isn't just about the business. It's actually about providing a safe environment for people to do commerce.